welcome to the Bible study hour. You might have thought that we had deserted you, but during the break, I know for sure that you have been doing your study and what a beautiful study it has been from the beginning of the quarter until now as we go through the book of Ephesians. We are very pleased to be back with you here and more so pleased to have Pastor James Sunlin and Pastor Alden Mort with me, Lorna Stevenson, to study with you again. We are going through the book of Ephesians and we want you to pay special attention because there are so many rich lessons for us as we come near to the close of this six chapter book. We want to say thanks to God for having led us through to this point, and we say thanks also to our sponsors, Easy Deal Auto Sales and Tours Limited. Today, as we open God's word to go into this beautiful study, we just ask you to join us in prayer before we open the word. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity so that we can be here to, so, to study and to share your words. We seek your divine presence. We ask for your Holy Spirit's guidance. And may you help us as we share together with those of our viewers that all of us will grow spiritually and be uh, made ready to face all the battles against the evils. So give us the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10, Paul has a lot of, you know, advice for us. And we are looking at Paul's military metaphor as he starts off there. We want you to gather everything from every word that is expressed in our lesson for this week. And we, we want you to understand that we are in this battle together that Paul is talking about. We have a memory text that lingers throughout the study. The memory text is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. As we read this together, we will see certain things emerging from this text. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. We have read this as written in our outline. But I want us to read it again. And this time, I'm going to ask that we read it from the King James Version. What does it say in the King James Version that is slightly different, but meaning the same thing, of course. So if we look at verses 10 and 11, it goes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We'll put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And no doubt we have read this two times because those are the verses which will linger with us as we talk about the battle speech that is introduced there by Paul and as we talk about finding strength in Christ. Now, let's deal with battle speech. What battle speech do we see in these verses? Well, I, I like to see um, Paul, as it were, standing before uh, a group of persons. is like an army general that is up against uh, another army and is giving some instructions and words of guidance mm -hmm. to, the, to the warriors, the soldiers. And I see Paul here as one of God's instrument um, who understands clearly what spiritual warfare is about because he is engaged in it himself, so he knows what it is. And he's now writing to the brethren in Ephesus 
to let them be aware that they are involved in a serious battle, a battle that is far beyond earth. It, mm-hmm. it, 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 it goes up into the whole, uh, you know, cosmic um, realm that one must be aware of. So the enemies to be up against are not just the ones around you, but they're above. That's right. <laughs> and they're everywhere. Be, some can be seen, some can't be seen. So it is really a call to awake this consciousness in, in every Christian believer that you're up against something very serious. And early in what Paul is saying there, in this battle scene that he is presenting, he's saying to the church that they must put on armor. Yes. yes. Now, if you're going to put on armor, it means that it's serious, yes. serious fighting going it on. It is. It's not just a little roadside knock fist thing mm-hmm. that's going on. Mm-hmm. The serious fighting that's, that's going right. on. That's right. Okay. While we're not going to be lingering very long in these, you know, sections, we just want your comment, Pastor Mort, on finding strength in Christ. The, we need to understand, and Paul, you know, carries to the, the point that the battle that we are in is, is not about us and our weaponry, human weaponry, mm-hmm. but the strength is in the Lord. And so, therefore, Paul says that, and, and he says it in, even in Ephesians 6, verse 10, and he says, in the Lord and in his the power of, in the power of his. Mm-hmm. And so you see over and over, Paul is telling his, the church in Ephesus that you are in a battle. Yes, but your strength is not in you. It is in Christ. And so even as a church um, today, we too are in a battle. And the power is not in us, but it is in Jesus Christ who gives us the victory. Thank you, sir. I, I, you know, I have to comment on, you know, how Paul emphasizes the, the intent of what he's saying mm-hmm. to the brethren. Just look at verse 10, verse 11, rather. Am I right or wrong? Ah, it's verse 10 I want, mm-hmm. where he says that be strong in the Lord and in the power of, of his, his might. might. Notice the use of those two words. Right. The power oh, of, of his, his might. It, it goes to give us a certain kind of assurance mm-hmm. that we're not talking about anything here that is feeble. Yes. No. That is a maybe. Power. Mm-hmm. Yes. Might. Repeating it to understand that Listen, the only way you're going to lose this fight is if you, you decide to change sides. Yes. Certainly. Definitely. Yes. Right. So then it is, it is a reality of, of serious battle. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and notice what Paul is saying is that the strength that we really don't have. That's we, right. Yeah. We don't have. Yeah. We don't have it. We lack it. It is, it is, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So whatever strength or power we have, it's, it's going to fail if we're not in the power of Christ. That's right. And don't forget that in all of what he's talking about here, he's calling us to stand. Yes. That's right. He was calling the Ephesian brethren to stand. He's calling the church of Christ today to stand. And there is much that we are going to be gathering from that standing as we go along with this discussion. For right now, however, we want to emphasize the fact that Paul wasn't only appealing or really sensitizing the Ephesians Mm -hmm. because he has carried this kind of a theme throughout all all of his letters to all of his churches. We can mention all of them if we'd want to, but maybe we can just cite two of them for now and see what he's saying there that is reminding them that they really need to be aware Mm -hmm. of this battle that we are in. 
So let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6 to 8. Paul says, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Pastor Sunlin, you just read that, but I'd love your comment on the passage you have just read. How does this whole matter of sleep and all that thing come into this thing of this battle that we are in, which is a speaking of the great controversy? Well, let's take it into context. One, yes. um, no true soldier can be physically sleeping hmm. and engage in battle. It's, mm -hmm. it's just not possible. You're sleeping, it means that you're relaxing. You're, you don't even know exactly what's going on. You're asleep. So if you're asleep, then you, you have sort of a surrendered yourself. You, you, definitely, most to definitely. To destruction. To destruction. Most definitely the enemy finding you sleeping, you are going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And on the second um, way is spiritual sleep is no match to spiritual battle. And spiritual sleep here is referring to someone who does not know God, does not have a relationship with God, does not spend time in his word, does not spend time to pray, is not spiritually aware of his or her own spiritual condition, and, and, and as a result is without spiritual power. And if we are fighting in a spiritual battle and you have no spiritual awareness, no spiritual power, you've already lost the battle. I've already lost you know, it. you started off your comment by saying that, you know, it, it applies to people who do not know God. Yeah. I, you, you, th you think you're talking about church members? Of course. The, uh, you okay, know, okay. Um, I, said I, I just wanted to clear I up said that. something to somebody <laughs> uh, just yesterday about, you know, some persons who are in the church and, um, you know, and the person said, well, not everyone in the church knows God. Not everyone in the church has a relationship with God because there are some persons who are church members, but they really don't have a relationship. So I believe Paul is talking to church people mm -hmm. and he's saying you can't afford to find yourself in a place, in a spiritual situation where you don't know God or you don't have any spiritual power. You might as well don't even start Mm -hmm. to think of the battle. Yeah. You've already lost it. That's right. That's, let's see what he's saying when we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. And the word of God declares, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. Pastor Mott, <laughs> what have you gained from that passage now, that you have you just know, read? I, 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 when, I re when I read it, I remember the words of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus telling his disciples that though they are in this world, they are not of this world. Right. And so we realize that Paul said that, you know, you walk in the flesh. Um, we do things daily and we, we, you know, we operate in this world. However, we, we are not controlled by sin. Mm -hmm. We are not controlled by, by the, the worldliness that is around us. Because guess what? For the warfare are not carnal. You know, it is not, you know, the things, you know, we are war, as, as, as Paul put it, we are warring not against flesh, our, our blood, oh, but yes. against spirit, spirituality, against darkness. And so therefore we are in a warfare, mm -hmm. even though we are in this world. And the good news is that God has called us to this warfare. And the warfare is we are victorious through Jesus Christ. Yes. So victory are already given to us, even though we are fighting. Mm -hmm. And that's the good news because God called us you know, to pull down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's only two of the references that we have used, you know, of Paul alerting the believers yeah. that, 
Listen, be on your guard. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not easy out there. It's a war that's going on. Yes, yes. So you must yes. know where you stand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We read from Thessalonians and from Corinthians. But if we were going to go to Romans or to Colossians or to Philippians, all of those letters that he wrote to the churches, you would find somewhere in all of them yes. that little advice that is put in for the strengthening of the believers. But I don't want to yes. miss Romans. Because, yes. Because, because Paul... <laughs> Paul has something in Romans. He's saying it's high time yes. to, to awake out of sleep, mm -hmm. which suggests that the believers were not in a good spiritual standing. Yes. The fact that he says that they are asleep and not aware, mm -hmm. or it's high time to awake, they are actually sleeping. Mm -hmm. And could it be that today that there are many believers who are spiritually slumbering, mm -hmm. which means don't have a relationship with God, don't know him well. And is isn't it, isn't it important then that this call be, be listened to and, and, be, and, and, and we take the advice that we wake out of our slumber and our sleep? And he says, he's saying, no, cast off the works of darkness. Mm -hmm. No, that's a serious, that's a serious mm -hmm. indictment. How could Paul <laughs> talk to the believers as cast off the works of darkness? Mm -hmm. I mean, the believers are not supposed to be having works of darkness. The believers are supposed to be walking in the light. But, but Paul is talking about the reality that mm -hmm. there are persons in church who are actually involved in works of darkness. And he's saying, you especially are in trouble mm -hmm. because if you don't put on the armor of light, you're dead. Mm -hmm. you're, you're stiff down there. You're going to be in serious trouble. And the truth of what you're saying there, Pastor, is that we are not called to be civilians. No. We are called to be soldiers. That's yes. right. That's right. So, so, you know, we don't have any choice. Not we, a choice. We can't say, those who want to fight, go ahead <laughs> to battle and fight. No way. We are all in this thing together. That's mm -hmm. right. In this battle. But Paul spends time. And in the passage in Ephesians, starting at verse 10 going on, I think he uses this term about three times talking about standing mm -hmm. and understanding what it means to be standing on the ancient battlefield. Mm -hmm. So if we go to that passage now, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 to 14, we are going to see there what he's saying about standing. He says, put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. I want to think that great battles were fought during Paul's time. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yep. But the method of fighting was somewhat different from the method used today. Mm -hmm. Those weapons that were used were somewhat different from yeah. what we use Swords today. And spears yes. and shields. All right. Now, if they're using those weapons, you can understand how important it is for the soldiers in the battle mm -hmm. to stand. Yes. That's right. Because in using those weapons, you can't use them effectively sitting, sitting down. down or lying down. No, not at all. No. Tell us what we see here in the stages that we, we want to refer to as we think about standing on the battlefield. Um, you know, when you look at it, and you know, Paul 
use the term stand, not to just stand and be relaxed, but you know, to draw close, mm -hmm. um, to attack, uh, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. And so therefore, uh, and to go into battle, to, to fight. And, and, and this is very pivotal for the Christians because even as, as Christ called us, mm -hmm. we must not just sit in the church and do nothing. Because there are some persons who have this idea that they must sit down and just sing and praise and all that. But we must go against the enemy. Yeah. We must share the good news so that others will come. So we are in a battle. We are, we are in a battle. And we must be active in it. You know, I can appreciate what you mean, Pastor, when you talk about sit in the church and do nothing. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you think you're doing nothing, yeah. you're actually doing what someone else wants you to do. Yes. <laughs> and you will always find substitute. There, there's no vacuum, as it were, yes. Yes. In, in the church where that is concerned. Because while you sit there think you're, thinking you're doing nothing, you're finding space and time to criticize and yes, find yes, fault. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have to be very careful about that. Mm -hmm. But you were so right about the whole matter of attacking. Mm -hmm. Yes, and being active mm -hmm. in the fight. Go ahead, you want to say something I, I, I else? I want to say something. Remember that the enemy you know, that we are fighting against was our master. We were once with the, in darkness, as Paul says. Yes. And now, you know, this enemy has treated us not well, in that, not too well. And so we are on the Lord's side now. All right? And God has sent us to attack. <laughs> to attack the enemy, our former master. And, you know, you know, you can understand Paul now. Because what Paul was now experienced with Jesus, he wanted to share it. And he wanted others to know. So he was saying, listen, man, get active, get involved. Mm -hmm. So in the standing position, Pastor Sun Lane, mm -hmm. we're not only attacking, we're not only busy just fighting, yes, fighting. Yes, but Paul advises us to do something else yes. with the enemy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Push back. Push back. That's right. <laughs> Push back. That's Rest right. Yes. So in Rest. other words, you're not fighting just, you know, in, in circles. No. Yes. The no. idea is to beat mm -hmm. back yes. the enemy. Yes. Yes. It's a wrestling match. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, without us being engaged in the wrestling, we are going to be pinned down or we're going to be slaughtered. So we have to be willing to, to stand and just push back, wrestle, fight against. And with all of that, we have to remember that it is not in our own strength, but it is our total dependence on God. And as you speak about wrestling, that takes us to the closing section of our study for this week, where we look at wrestling against evil powers. Paul spared no pains whatsoever in emphasizing that you must understand who you're fighting against. Yeah, sure. And the, the concept of wrestling is used here because I think that was a good sort of a preparation for battle. Mm -hmm. If you even think of wrestling as it is now, being active, fighting against mm -hmm. the enemy. But it's not only in chapter 6 of Ephesians that Paul talks about this wrestling and this war and, you know, all of what's going on and the evil powers. We have reference in Ephesians 1, 21 and Ephesians 3, verse 10. So we look at those and see what they are saying to us. And it says, For above all principality and power, and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which to come. Okay, that's chapter 121. Yes. So we look at chapter 3, verse 10 now. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church and the manifold wisdom 
of God. All right. Keep those two references in mind as we go back to chapter 6, and we are going to be looking at verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right, now what terms do you find are repeated in these verses? Um, we have seen, you know, principality, uh, mm -hmm. principalities mm -hmm. and power and might and dominion. And, um, and, and, it's, and, and, that, and what is interesting, but this one is interesting, not only in this world, mm -hmm. but also in that which is to come. And so, you know, you see, we, we are... The power of evil is upon us, but we have a power that is on our side, mm -hmm. that is greater than all the forces of evil. And so we need to be cognizant of that. that you know, and, and that's why the reading in the, in the introduction section about Eli, uh, Eli Elijah, mm -hmm. and he said, open the eyes when the servant say, hey, you know, what are we going to do in the city? The army is against us and all. And he prayed that God should open his eyes and right. when he saw the amount of angel and chariot you understand and so we have power that is available to us yes. praise the lord and pastor sunlin we, as we as we talk about these powers authority and rulers and you know dominion and how, how do we interpret that in the reality of the battle we are fighting the reality is that we have both spiritual and physical realm to deal with. In the physical realm, we have, we have people, we have, we have political leaders, we have kings and queens and, and all kind of individuals who are in the, the powers on earth in various countries that we will have to relate to. And many of these rulers are tied up with satanic powers mm -hmm. so they are his confederates they are his agents and so we have to deal with those as well as satan and his evil angels so it, it is a it's a it's a battle that i would call a fourfold battle mm -hmm. and so it is not an easy one we have to be prepared to deal with all of the various ways in which satan will come at us right so paul makes it very clear that the general of the enemy army is not an easy general. No, no, <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. We must understand who we are up against. Mm -hmm. But it's also, as you have said, both of mm -hmm. you have said it, and it's clear in Paul's writing here to the Ephesians, that we must understand too that when we go to battle to fight, against this enemy army mm -hmm. that we must know who our general is. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Because we are fighting in the strength of yes. our general. Yes. yes. And because the battle that goes on is a non-stop battle. Mm -hmm. We are advised by Paul to put on the whole armor. That's right. He didn't say anything about taking it off. <laughs> you can't. You can't afford. <laughs> so it means that we must keep it on at all times because the battle is on at all times. That's right. It's so nice to have had you in the study this week, gentlemen. And we just want to say to our viewers that this study that we have had this week continues into next week because we are going to take that armor that Paul is talking about and we are going to dissect it to understand it and we will learn more from God's word. God bless you as you study with us this week and we ask you to prepare to study again next week and keep on studying in between because there's so much for us to learn. Please, as we close off our study now, remember that you are a part of the battle. And you have a decision to make as to whose army 
you will fight in because you are going to be a soldier whether you want to or not. May God help you to be a soldier in the Lord's army. Join us just now for a closing prayer, please. Eternal Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for calling us to stand. And the assurance that it is not us, but it's Christ. And so right now I want to present the viewers asking you, Holy Spirit, to continue to be with them and to teach them in the, the way of righteousness and to be with us. And Father, help us that even as we are involved in this warfare, we will just surrender everything to Jesus. May you bless us. May you cause your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen.